What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out real reason why Brock Lesnar won the WWE Championship at Elimination Chamber 2022 by none other than WrestleMania. We know the real reason. It's it's Vince. It's always gonna be Vince is the real reason. At the end of the day, we know Vince wants Roman versus Brock, title versus title. That's the the money making match that they want for the main event at this year's WrestleMania. So it's no surprise, but. We're going to check out what the real reason is. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this video. What is going on, guys? <clears throat> it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. The 2022 Elimination Chamber pay-per-view has entered the history books, and Brock Lesnar is your new WWE Champion. However, why did the WWE have the Beast regain the belt after just losing it at the Royal Rumble? Well, join us now as we look at the real reasons why Brock Lesnar regained the WWE Championship. All of them Be sure to subscribe and hit that <laughs> notification <laughs> bell for daily reason. wrestling videos Vince and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number one, the WWE wanted something big for the Saudi Super Show. And the first reason has to do with the incredible amount of money the WWE receives for running its Super Shows in Saudi Arabia. That's why fancy dream matches like Goldberg vs. Roman Reigns and- That's not a dream match, I'm sorry. Maybe when Goldberg maybe first came back around, potentially, but no, it's not a dream match. It's not for me. Lita versus Becky Lynch. <clears throat> However, while those dream matches are a good way to tap into the Saudi Sports Authority's thirst for nostalgia, that's only the beginning. The WWE added to the excitement by featuring two elimination chambers. The first time said match was held in Saudi Arabia. And just to make sure the fans knew they were getting something special, the fans saw a WWE Championship change hands. While the WWE Saudi shows might not be called WrestleMania, the Saudi Sports Authority expects a WrestleMania-like buzz, and they certainly got it with this show. Number 2. Roman Reigns Defeated Goldberg now, While it may seem like a case of apples and oranges, the WWE didn't want the fans to send the fans home disappointed that their heroes Goldberg and Lita came up short in their matches. As we explained in our news and rumors video on Elimination Chamber, the WWE has to please the fans and Saudi officials with some feel-good moments and having Brock Lesnar, who it can be argued has taken on the same legendary status as past Saudi favorites like Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker and Goldberg, winning the WWE Championship was a way to make up for Dollar Bill and Lita losing. Number 3 I'm, I'm not going with that. <laughs> I can see that happening, but no. It's because... Vince wanted it to happen. A title change is always good for big shows. And whether you call them pay-per-views or premium events, I would love to just call them pay-per-views, the WWE likes to feature <laughs> title changes at their big shows, not only to give fans a reason to watch them, but because the promotion feels that's one of the best places to feature them. There weren't many title matches tonight, especially after the WWE turned the SmackDown Tag Team Championship into a no contest after the Usos ambushed the Viking Raiders. So the best match of the show, 10 out of 10. WWE's <laughs> options were limited. Since the WWE was committed to Lesnar winning the belt, what better place than at the pay per view? Number 4, the WWE wanted to establish Lesnar's dominance. And many of the reasons for Lesnar's win are interconnected. Primarily, the WWE's goals of making Lesnar vs. Reigns the match of the century. Well, at least until The Rock wrestles Reigns. Mm -hmm. Roman can't wrestle just any opponent. The Tribal Chief has to wrestle someone just as dominant as him, and someone who seems more capable of <coughs> defeating the Universal Champion. <coughs> Lesnar seemed to stumble a bit when Reigns defeated him at Crown Jewel, but there were extenuating circumstances. The usual interference from the Usos, as was the case when Roman helped Bobby Lashley defeat Lesnar for the championship at the Royal Rumble. No matter how you may feel about Lesnar dismantling Riddle, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins and Austin Theory in a matter of moments, the WWE re-established Lesnar as the Beast Incarnate. I mean, I get it, but once again, it's just, this is the same Seth Rollins that beat Lesnar a few years ago at WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? And he just got tossed away like it was nothing. AJ Styles tossed away. Matt Riddle tossed away. Austin Theory killed. It was one of those things where it's like, it would have been cool for them to put up some type of, you know, offensive, but no, they got destroyed. So it, it, it ultimately reinforces that idea to everyone 
that these guys ain't really ain't really it. They're not. They're not main event worthy. They're not WrestleMania worthy, which sucks because I think they are. Because at the end of the day, this Brock Lesnar train, at some point, he's not going to come back. So you're going to be left with the people that are there every single day, every week, every pay-per-view. And if you're not building them up to somewhat be strong, how can we even care about the future talent that's going to come after Seth Rollins? How can we care about those guys when the guys we have on television Future Hall of Famers are getting destroyed like jobbers. I can, I'm can, i cool. I get it. Brock probably was going to win it. But the way he destroyed everybody, bro, he made everybody look like fucking chumps. And that sucks. I mean, he's done that for quite some time. But <clears throat> it just felt like it was just they were in and out. As soon as he came out there, you're done, you're done, you're done, you're done. And the only person that can stop him is Roman. That's that's the story they're trying to tell. Having him dominate everyone in the Elimination Chamber. <clears throat> and we do think this was a bad news, but as fans know, Vince McMahon books the WWE, well, for himself. Thank you. But the Beast is back, and he's ready to conquer Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Number five, it's another notch in Lesnar's belt. As minor as this reason may be, the fact that Lesnar won the WWE Championship is another way of cementing Lesnar's legacy as one of the all-time greats, especially when he puts Reigns over again at WrestleMania. Yeah, if y'all think Brock is winning this at WrestleMania, it's not happening. The ultimate goal is to have Roman be on another level. Last year's WrestleMania, him defeating Daniel Bryan at the time in Edge, pinned both of them, stabbed both of them in a triple threat match, of course with some interference, that elevated him. This year, you got to go up even higher. Beating Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship and holding both belts, that's a higher elevation. I just want it to be clean. If he could beat him legitimately clean, then, then it's like, okay. Because if he cheats again, then it's like, why? You know what I'm saying? Have him win clean. Have him win clean. He's a heel. Have him win clean. Maybe do heel-like things leading up to it, but have him win clean. Simple as that. That puts him in another stratosphere. He beat him and took the belt. So now he has both belts. So. Number six, the WWE wants to save Lesnar versus Lashley for later. While the WWE's yeah. booking of Lesnar crushing his opponents was questionable, we think the WWE handled things well by taking Bobby Lashley out of the match with a storyline injury. And in case he missed the show, Seth Rollins buckle bomb Austin Theory into Bobby Lashley's pod, taking out the pod and Bobby Lashley with it. This led to Lashley being taken out and the announcement made that Lashley was out of the match due to the WWE's concussion protocol. This kept the Almighty from having to jump to Lesnar or Thank anyone God. else in the chamber, which leaves the door open for a future match between Lesnar and... And apparently, he was uh, legitimately injured. He's going to have to take some time off to get some surgery done. Uh, that's one of the reasons why he hadn't really been doing anything on Monday Night Raw with the championship. He was legitimately injured. So, at least he was protected in a sense. And I'm sure they will revisit them again. And most likely Brock will win because Bobby Lashley has a win over him with the asterisk mark. So it's going to happen again, but the result will probably be Bobby Lashley will lose. And Lashley down the road. <coughs> Lesnar can say Lashley's win over him at the Rumble was tainted due to Roman's interference, while Lashley can say he never lost to Lesnar in the chamber. Number seven, Lesnar versus Reigns has to be title versus title. Facts. Undoubtedly, the biggest reason for WWE putting the strap around Lesnar's waist is that Vince McMahon seems to have fallen in love with the idea of Lesnar versus Reigns being a title versus title match be. when they meet. In an incredible instance of how promoters can turn chicken shit into chicken salad, Roman Reigns' COVID-related absence at day one led to the WWE mm -hmm. inserting Lesnar into the WWE Championship bout instead of his planned challenge for the Universal Championship. The WWE must have realized just how much more special a title versus title match would be when it put the championship on Lesnar mm -hmm. and realized how big title versus title would be at WrestleMania. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's still ways they could have did this without 
inserting him in the Royal Rumble. That's all I'm saying. Some of you guys are like, oh, no, there's no other way they could. Yes, there's a way it could have been title versus title. There's two nights. The winner of the Royal Rumble could face someone on night one or whatnot. Most likely they'll end up losing, obviously. They say they want to face Roman Reigns. They're going to lose. Say they want to face Brock. They're going to lose. It still sucks for that person who wins it because it's like, well, they end up losing to that individual. Or you could pull a swerve. You never know. And then night two, whoever wins from night one can face the person in night two. There's the benefits of having two nights. So there's a way you can do it. It's just got to be something that someone wants to do. Or or you can set it up where, I right, granted, this is a stretch. But WWE, they, they stretch rules all the time. The winner has the opportunity for the first time since it's going to be a title versus title match if they would have established that. The winner of this year's Royal Rumble has the opportunity to be you know, one of the competitors to win both championships. Whoever wins that match, since they agreeing to do a title versus title, whoever wins the Royal Rumble, they get inserted into the match, and now it's a triple threat title versus title match. Whoever, if the, the person wins the Royal Rumble and they win the match, they win both championships. That makes the Royal Rumble even more sweeter because that's the first time this ever happened. Oh, shit, I can get both belts? Of course, that person will probably not win, and they would probably end up eating the pin, but it would still be a good almost moment. You know what I'm saying? There's just ways. I don't want to hear anyone say there's no way they could have done this because this was all convoluted. Yeah. While we've pointed out that a title versus title match is only good in the short term, the WWE seems determined to unify the belts at Mania. I hope the they problem, do. of course, is that this is the classic hotshot booking and the WWE likely doesn't have any idea what to do when Roman Reigns defeats Brock Lesnar, Facts. unifying the belt. Yep. As history has shown, no matter how many times the WWE has an undisputed title, it inevitably ends up creating a second world title in yep. order to accommodate its two brands. Yep. And that doesn't seem to matter though, because hotshotting is the name of the game, especially when it comes to the showcase of the Immortals. We'll worry about booking later on, says Vince. Number 8, the WWE wanted to swerve the fans. A Bobby Lashley's WWE Championship win over Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble was quite the surprise, especially for fans who believed a title versus title match between Lesnar and Reigns was carved in stone for WrestleMania. Lesnar's loss led to questions about what might happen between the Chamber and Mania, with speculation Lesnar might not regain the belt or even that Reigns might lose his Universal Championship. Putting Lesnar into an Elimination Chamber match tipped the odds in Lesnar's favor, but it was not a guarantee he would win, giving fans more an incentive to tune into the show and see if he could fulfill his goal of becoming WWE Champion. And number 9, the WWE wants to hype Mania. Now, WrestleMania is always big, but as you've undoubtedly realized, the WWE seems to want to make this year's WrestleMania the biggest show they ever. Do. There are a number of reasons for this, including the WWE's decision to run Mania over two nights again, as well as the promotion's long-term business goals. The WWE's decision to make WrestleMania into another two-night event is a bold move, especially since the card is being held at Arlington, Texas' yeah. AT&T Stadium, which can house anywhere from 80 to 100,000 fans, depending on the show. Although the WWE doesn't plan on filling the entire stadium, the optics of a half-empty stadium at WWE's flagship show would be terrible. That shouldn't be a problem as the WWE is taking major steps to bring in as many mm -hmm. big matches as possible, with the rumors that Stone Cold Steve yep. Austin could return to the ring. While that remains to be seen, the <coughs> WWE has been planning to feature Brock vs. Roman for some time now, a match it can all but guarantee. The WWE has also several long-term business goals related to WrestleMania being the most successful one yet. Brock vs. Roman is so important because the WWE seems determined to increase its live event presence, including WWE President Nick Khan's goal of housing more premium events at stadiums in order to give the WWE more legitimacy and put it into a similar footing as major league sports like baseball and mm. football. If the WWE can make WrestleMania 38 into a sellout, you can be certain the WWE will do so with future editions of the Showcase of the Immortals. This perception of the WWE as a hot property, and more importantly a mainstream one, will likely benefit the WWE with future deals ranging from TV rights deals, mm -hmm. advertising and even putting the company up for sale should Vince McMahon decide to go down this route. The more popular the WWE gets, the more money it can get, and at this point, as long as fans enjoy the product in the short term, the WWE's ever increasing revenues makes its long term booking a distant second to the almighty dollar. Facts. So there you have it guys. Facts bro.
WWE, Vince McMahon, it's it's a business. He knows it. He's trying to make as much money off of it as possible. And he's making the most money he's ever made with this company. Ever. Ever. So it's just one of those situations where it's like, when it comes to booking, long-term booking, you can hang that shit up. It's all about the bottom dollar, what's going to sell, what's going to make them the most money. Simple as that. Brock winning is going to make them the most money. Am I okay with it? No. Do I like how he won? No. But I understand it from a business standpoint. The only issue is at what point are the people that you have on your roster going to get that type of rub where they can be a next star within your company? That's all I'm saying. You don't have to ask them, hey, can you come back? We need help. You know what I'm saying? You want to, this is why you build up stars and they don't really have any big main event stars outside of Roman. Outside of Roman. That is a biggest star right now. The thing that Vince wanted years ago, he has it now in Roman. So, I get it. It's just It, it just kind of sucks to see some of your favorites get fucking obliterated. But I will say, Austin Theory being murdered on television not gonna lie to you that was insane rest in peace off awesome theory oh man he got destroyed but comment down below and let me know are you guys okay with brock winning do you guys really care that he won are you guys even excited for a title versus title match let me know down below man i appreciate all love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace